Hey everybody, well, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, I can't do this, I can't do this. Jordan, where's my Black Lantern ring? Now I'm ready. We're gonna do an overview for the absolute edition of Dark Knight's Death Metal. It is right here, it's phenomenal. We're gonna show you some things you should read before, we're gonna look at the build quality, and we're gonna talk about, you know, the pros and cons between that versus the Omnibus books that's coming out next year. As always, if you're gonna pick this up, I highly recommend our sponsor, Organic Price Books. There, you can save $2 on your order of this with the code BRAVEBOYS, or if you're buying three or more books together, you can save 5% with the code BRAVEBOYSSIT. So this is phenomenal. Let's Dive in. I cannot wait. Deep within a bleak and dismal swamp, hidden beneath its murky waters, lies the headquarters of the most sinister villains of all time. The Legion of Doom. Before we dive into the overall build quality and what sets this absolute apart, I want to talk about kind of what you should read first. Now, I've beat this horse dead. Uh, many a time we have both our video on every DC crisis omnibus ever as well as our Watchmen doomsday clock reading order So you can watch both of those videos here um, But I will say that the bare minimum t stripping out everything extra, you know that you know The bare minimum I would read is Dark Knight's metal So Dark Knight's metal has an absolute and we'll compare how this looks with the uh, Absolute it looks phenomenal. So, you know literally in it. It feels like metal slipcase uh, there's also an omnibus of metal, which I highly recommend. Um, you can get as you can get instead. Um, and bare minimum, I would recommend the uh, deluxe Batman Who Laughs or regular Batman Who Laughs. It doesn't have to be deluxe, but metal and the Batman Who Laughs are kind of bare minimum what you should read. So that is, you know, that we got out of the way. Let's jump into the build quality. Let's take some overview shots and then we'll flip through and show you guys some art about what makes this like sound cheesy the most hard rock and metal balls to the walls dc story ever so metal is a very personal story to me metal was like my first crisis event that i got to read in single issues and death metal was my finale of dc after that i said you know what i am ready to finally transition to be a collected editions reader so this is kind of like the bookmark chapters of my dc story so very personal to me i really wanted to make this video and I can't wait to show you what makes it so special. So Dark Knight's Metal and Death Metal were spearheaded by the amazing Scott Snyder and art by the incredible Greg Capullo. Um, it kind of is kind of like a narrative through line. It starts with the new 52 Batman. And then as we got into Rebirth, when he stepped away from the Batman title, he started setting the seeds for metal. And it's just, I mean, everything spins out of it. And then Death Metal was kind of like his swan song ending to DC before he started doing his creator issues. Like I said, the uh, Omnibus is coming out next year. Uh, this is the deluxe edition right here. But I want to kind of show you how they look. So as you can see here, Dark Knight's Metal and Absolute Death Metal look phenomenal together. They have a matching theme and it they just look I, they just look awesome. So Metal is going to be a lighter silver and it really looks like steel. And then Death Metal just looks like just blackened and dark. Here you can see Absolute Dark Knight's Metal next to Absolute Death Metal. And oh my god, if these covers don't instantly make you want to pick up the book i don't know what will i mean look at how badass the characters look on death metal i mean don't get me wrong the classic justice league is pretty cool on metal but i mean you can see the characters go through the ringer so i mean it's it's awesome i love absolutes that look sexy together as you guys they don't know absolutes are my favorite way to collect and i'm so excited to jump into what makes death metal special so without further ado now that you've seen them look next to each other i want to jump into death metal we're going to flip through and look at some of the art and i cannot wait to show you what's inside now this is going to be a spoiler free review so i'm not going to jump into too many plot points but essentially the world, this is like a, a friggin' crisis and it just jumps you straight into the world and all these crazy things are happening and you don't know what's going on and it is just like the most metal s series ever. Dark Knight's Metal, I'll get into a little bit more. So it has to do with a bunch of dark evil mirror versions of Batman invade the world and you deal with that and kind of what spins off from that is the Batman Who Laughs, which is a Jokerized version of Batman is left. Here in Death Metal, you see the final fight between the Batman who laughs and his ally Perpetua and the remaining heroes of this war-torn world. So I don't want to give you any more, say anything more because that'd be spoilers, but let's jump in and look at that Greg Capullo art. Now that we've talked about what you should read before and compared it to the other Absolute, I want to jump into the build quality and what makes this so special. So if you think this cover is cool, look what happens when I slide off the dust jacket. 
gorgeous line art. And when you open it up, I'm a sucker for extras, like the Multiversity Absolute. You get this massive, you get this massive poster. Now talking about the build quality, like I said, this doesn't feel like a standard slip case. This kind of has almost a metal texture and like a graphite finish to it. Really cool and has these textured ridges. Um, the actual build quality of the book, like any absolute is superb. So you're gonna get, you know, gorgeous oversized art and you're gonna get a nice ribbon. So I have to be careful as we go to flip through the art of this book because so much of it is a spoiler, but I'm gonna do my best. You know, that's the power of editing. So let's jump in and look at the art. Here you can see that amazing line work that we talked about. Open it up, get that same metal embossing that we have on the outside. Death metal is about truth. So one thing to know about this story is it, it jumps straight in. So you really wanna have read those books that we talked about. Wonder Woman is, you know, rocking a chainsaw. I mean, dude, this art is crazy. I love how every, it's like all the heroes that we know and love, but they all look so different. Uh, you got those creepy Robins, let me jump forward. And then you get the Dark Knight. Uh, Batman Who Laughs is one of the main antagonists. This right here isn't so much a spoiler for uh, Dark Knight's death metal, but it is kind of the overarching theme. So a lot of the best DC crises stories are meta textual commentaries on what's really going on. So here you get to see every previous crisis, whether it's Crisis on Infinite Earths or Infinite Crisis. And basically every crisis not only changed the DC world, but it changed DC editorial and kind of the story mandates. And they call death metal the anti-crisis. Now, what does the anti-crisis mean? You'll have to see, but I kind of think that their central theme is that everything matters, whether it was from any previous story, any previous continuity, it all matters, it all exists. And I love death metal because as crazy and as metal and hard rock as it is, it's also a love letter to every DC story that's come before. So it, it's like, if you've been a long time reader, you can read this storyline and you'll really just be like, oh my God, that's a love letter to that. That's a love letter to that. So it just built for years, but it also ties together to all these previous DC stories. So I think it's just really cool. Now, I just want to say, I wouldn't let that intimidate you. You have, you don't have to read every story ever. You know, it's not a Grant Morrison story, but what I will say is you are rewarded if you are a long time fan. And at the time of me reading this, it was at the height of my DC collecting. And it was just like such a love letter to me. And it, and it felt like such a fitting place to end. They, the way this story ends is really, really, I mean, like most crisis, the way the story ends, it sets up a lot of things. And I think not only is this a great place to end, it's also a great place to start because of the things that take place after it. So that might sound really vague and a lot of weird speaking, but essentially you could jump in at death metal and that could be your start and that's super valid. You could end at death metal and that could be your ending and that's super valid. So that's the beauty of it. It truly is an anti-crisis. Here you get to see a lot of the characters. A lot of villains are heroes. A lot of heroes are villains. I mean, just the amount of characters that they draw. But overall, this is just a full-on Wonder Woman storyline. She truly is the main hero. And I feel like she deserves all the love. Fast forward. I mean, dude, the, the, the Darkest Knight is just... I mean, I can't even tell you how OP that guy is. I gotta do a short on how powerful he is. But it really takes them all together. I think we'll end it here. Here you see the Darkest Knight just laughing over the whole multiverse. I don't want to go any further because the ending is bananas. The way they tie together stuff from previous stories is just so fulfilling. And I don't want to do any spoilers. So um, I probably already have to cut out some of the things we filmed because I, I really want you to go into the story blind like I did. I mean, I was collecting this and reading it week to week and I loved it. So let's jump to the back now and see the extras. So here we get alternative covers. And I mean, I, like Batman shredding a guitar. I mean, you could tell that a lot of these were maybe maybe designed. I don't want to say they were designed to sell action figures, but who doesn't want an action figure of Batman shredding or Wonder Woman rocking the swamp thing as a weapon on her arm, you know? Here we get to see Wonder Woman shredding that looks like a guitar and uh, Superman right there. I mean, what's going on with his arm or his, you know, I, I can't tell, tell you anything of the spoilers, but it is pretty metal, no pun intended. Here you get to see Wally West rocking some a new suit and some new powers. Of course, they give the Robin King a violin. I'm right here. I feel like this is just the iconic cover. If you want to know more about how to read these DC crises, we have a video on that. That's 
pretty cool. All of these covers are just so sick. I low-key actually really like Harley with the short hair. Here we get that Darkest Night. See, look, I mean, look at how many different varied characters there are on these covers. Really just shows you how they tie together in so many different characters. Before Jurassic League, before Across the Spider-Verse, they were the OGs with the dinosaur. Here we get to see character sketches, weapon sketches. I think Swamp Thing is one of my favorite characters in this storyline. More sketches. Hopefully none of these are horrible spoilers. I will fix it in the editing so you don't have to worry. And now let's uh, we'll take another look at that map. Oh, this is these okay. So these are all the previous crises, and you just get Perpetua's eyes looking over everything. I still remember the day I picked this up for the very first time, and it was, it was in Santa Cruz on vacation, and it was just so fun. That brings us to the end, guys. Here we get to see the back. It's that same cover as on the front. Okay, guys. So that was the book and the extras. Let's jump into my final thoughts. And guys, that's gonna wrap it up. We looked at the build quality, we looked at the art, we compared it to metal, talked about the different ways you collect. But you know, I have to say, this is one of my favorite stories. To me, it bookends a chapter of my collecting and I had to own it in the absolute. Will I get the omnibus? Heck yeah, you know I will. But I mean, sometimes you don't wanna read the omnibus, you know? Like I, I really wanna read Final Crisis, but the thought of opening up my Final Crisis omnibus is daunting to me. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I loved getting to talk about one of my favorite books. One of my goals of collecting is to own every DC Crisis in absolute format. So you know I had to pick up metal and I had to pick up death metal. If you want this phenomenal, amazing art, this crazy bombastic action in the largest format possible, I highly recommend you pick it up. And if you want to support this channel, I highly recommend picking it up at Organic Price Books. You can use our code BRAVEBOYS to save $2. Or if you wanted to buy this with Absolute Metal and The Batman Who Laughs, that's three books. You can use the code BRAVEBOYSIT to save 5%. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I have a lot of other overviews planned. Thank you for supporting this channel. You guys mean the absolute world to me. If you like the video, smash that like button. Comment down below what your favorite part of metal was or what your favorite DC crisis is. You know, tell, let me know if you're planning on getting the deluxe or the absolute or if you're waiting for the omnibus or if you're like me and you're going to be a lunatic and triple dip. You know, let me know down below. Uh, and guys, I had a lot of fun making this. I can't wait to show you what else we have in store. And importantly, I want you guys to keep reading and stay brave.